Two common terms that are discussed in, in back injuries are, are sprains and strains. And people often say, I strain my back, I sprain my back. Well, strain is a very specific word that means you, you've torn or damaged the muscles. And strains are often very short limited and will only last for a period of a few days to a few weeks. A sprain is an injury to a ligament. A sprain is tearing a ligament. And if you tear a ligament, that can produce longer problems, especially if there's instability or too much motion associated with it because we've now lost the strength of the ligament. Ligaments, again, are rubber bands that act to hold everything tight. When we talk about the spine, we have active stabilizers and passive stabilizers. The active stabilizers are the muscles. The passive stabilizers are the ligaments and the shapes of the bone. If we look at our model, the facet joints often act as passive stabilizers just because they block translation. They allow flexion extension, but they block, block translation. The ligaments, the disc, and, the, and there's a ligament that runs up the front of the spine called the anterior longitudinal ligament, same in the back, same in between the spinous process and interspinous ligament. Those are all passive stabilizers of the spine that are important to protect the spine. And all of those structures can be injured and associated with pain. The most common area of chronic back pain, chronic neck pain, is actually an injury to the disc. A tear of the disc or disruption of the disc and then progressive degeneration of the disc will lead to chronic pain syndromes. And this will be if you, if you destroy a disc in the back or it degenerates, becomes unstable, either from an accident, from degeneration, from, from life, from playing sports at a young age, from whatever, then that will present often as severe back pain and be persistent. And, and it will get better and get worse and get better and worse. The question is whether or not that can be solved by strengthening the muscles, and that would be a good exercise program, working on flexibility to maintain mobility in all the joints, the the actual facet joints, the SI joints, also in your hip joints and knee joints. You have to have all these moving together to function properly. And so can we treat that or ultimately is it something which would require surgery? The disc is, is as we said, like a ligament. Another great example of it is as a paper clip. And if you have a paper clip and you bend it too many times, that weakens and becomes friable and fails. Or let's say a rubber band. If you have an old rubber band and you keep stretching it and stretching it and stretching it, it becomes very friable and will break and crack. And that's what happens with discs as we get older. Unfortunately, degeneration is a part of life and, and part of living longer. And so as these structures deteriorate, they lose some of their strength, they lose some of their molecular structure and are weakened. And then they're more predisposed to injury, whether it's a minor event or a more major event, such as a car accident or a major slip and fall. One of the last areas I want to discuss under spinal pathology is the concept of spondylolisthesis and spondylolysis. The pars interticularis is the area of the bone between the facet above and the facet below. So between the superior facet and the inferior facet, there's a little area of bone we call the pars interticularis. That can fracture and often happens in, in athletes who are doing a lot of uh, bending and flexing. So gymnasts, down linemen, people that have to fire out of a stance, uh, baseball catchers or, or other people that, that often have an injury to that and can f and fracture this. And it often happens in adolescents but can also happen in professional athletes too. If there's a fracture there, the spine loses some of its support and it can then begin to weaken and start translating. So in our model here, this is an example of a model with a spondylolysis or spondylolysis depending on how you prefer to pronounce it. And so there'd be a fracture through the bone right there, and that's a fracture through the pars interticularis, commonly associated with athletic injuries. And then what can happen over time is the spine can slip forward. And we can see that it's slipping forward. So the bone here, the L5 bone, is sliding forward on the sacrum. And as that translates, that slippage of the spine is called spondylolisthesis. We like S words. So spondy means spine, lysis means slippage. Spondylolysis, spondy means spine, lysis means fracture. So that'd be a fracture of the spine, creates the weakness, then the lysis is the actual slippage of the spine. And this should not be confused from spinal stenosis. Stenosis is a term which means narrowing of the spinal canal. And often the, the spinal canal can be narrowed if there's a disc that's sticking into it, if there's arthritis, but especially when we have the slippage of the spine, the spondylolysis, that will narrow the canal in the area available for the canal.